What up, what up, what up, and welcome to Beast Corner, your podcast, favorite podcast. So, I'm your host, Peter Soprano, a.k.a. The Sports Guy. To my right, we have a special guest today, because Dre don't know how to fucking wake up. Yeah, so Dre's we, dead, I think. We have a special guest, the resident Mexican, David Quinones. Orale, mi gente. Just filling in, just filling in for today. So. So, so, I don't know what happened to Dre. He may have gotten kidnapped, so I don't even know what's going on. Listen, I put through a lot of sacrifice for this show. I was up till probably about 5 a.m. yesterday, but I'm here. We don't know where Dre is. Vic's probably going to walk in probably in the middle of this, maybe, hopefully. But listen, I'm still here to try to give you my picks because Porkies. I want you to win my picks. Like Porkies. <laughs> <laughs> passed <laughs> that, out. You that Porkies getting hot dogs <laughs> trying to pass out. Here's an hot dog. But it's a new day for Peace Corner and still for two dudes in the Mexican because pretty soon you're going to be able to get us on iTunes, on iHeartRadio, on every single type of podcast. All you got to do is subscribe to that, to that and you'll be able to get it much easier than you were before. We're still going to be on YouTube. Uh, we'll be on Periscope with two dudes in the Mexican for a little bit longer, but Listen, go subscribe to iTunes, go subscribe on everything at Spotify, and we'll be on there from now on. So, yeah, that's it. do it, do it. With that said, we got to get into this week fan- fantasy and picks. Last week's picks uh, for me and Dre uh, were up and down a little bit, but we kind of we kind of unlucky because, like for example, I bet Notre Dame by ten and a half. They were up by ten with like a minute to go. USC scores at the last second. That goes to boom. Virginia and Miami. Uh, we had Virginia was pretty much down one point the entire game. They dominated the game. They were inside the red zone about six times, and they just couldn't get a touchdown. And they lost that game by a last-minute score, and they lost that game by four points. So it was a little rough week for, for me with bets, but everything was close. You know, everything's coming. So I want your opinion on my picks for this week. So we're going to start out. I said last week I'm not going to be afraid to bet on my own team this week because I know them better than anybody else. So, my first pick this week is the Tennessee Titans minus two versus, excuse me, plus two against the Denver Broncos. I think that the Titans are a team that they're playing with a heavy heart today. One of their super fans, Matt Neely, passed away at 31 years old this week. He was very close to a lot of players on the team. So many players talked about him and how much he meant to them. And I think they're really going to go out there and give the effort for them this week. So, I think that's my first pick is that they're really going to go hard and play for them this week. So I have the Tennessee Titans over the Denver Broncos in Denver. Uh, listen, I, 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 I like that pick. Um, obviously, the talk this year uh, with the offense is, is Mariota. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, he's the brains of the offense. It, it almost seems like when he doesn't do well, obviously, the team doesn't do well. Yeah. Um, but, again, I, I think they need to focus on that run. Um, uh, you know, the Broncos have a pretty good defense, so – it's going to be tough to uh, uh, to win that game, but they got to stick to Henry. they yeah. got to feed him the ball. Yes. And the receivers have to make catches. Yeah. I mean, you have, you know, a lot of talent with your wide receivers. Obviously, Corey Davis, his season has been, you know, disappointing uh, yeah. uh, to the least right now. But I think he's such a big target, especially in the red zone. I mean, he's got to be able to go to Corey Davis. He's got to be able to utilize A.J. Brown also. I mean, you see the talent. This guy is like a lightning in a bottle. Yeah. I mean... You, you, you pass him the ball, and he's capable of, of taking it to the house. So he's got to use his weapons wisely. He's just got to, you know, stop holding on to the ball so so much, too. So And, I mean, obviously, that's easier said than done sometimes. Um, again, again, especially with a Denver defense, that's, that's pretty good. So, But uh, I, I, I like that pick. I think the Tennessee, Tennessee will cover. So. Who do you blame for that, the, the, the connection between the wide receivers and Mariota? Um, do, do you think it's because the wide receivers just aren't living up to their side, or do you think Mariota's not getting on the ball where they should be getting the ball? Um, listen, I, I, for, for me, it starts with coaching. I agree with uh, that. Listen, that. Everything starts with coaching. It has to funnel down. So if there's an issue with the wide receivers and the, the, the quarterback – the coach, the coach is, it's the coach's responsibility to work that out. Yeah. Uh, especially in practice, especially you know before game day, um, you know uh, they need to be creative and figure out what what are the issues and how to correct them. Um, listen, I, I think Mariota is a pretty good quarterback. Um, you know, obviously he has his issues this season, mm-hmm. but again, with a with a horse like you know Derrick Henry and talent with the talent that I just sh- that, that I just told you. Yeah. This offense should be running better than it has this season. So. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's a fair assessment. Now, let's go to my second pick of the week. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to roll all over the Jets this week. Right now, they're only minus seven. That's the pick that I think that 
I mean, I really thought about making that my best pick of the week because I think they're just going to run through them. Um, I saw what they did with Green Bay last week. I know they lost, but they came back strong at the end. They finally got the ball to Elliott. Dak finally woke up in the second half, but it was a little bit too late. They, they already Green Bay had already built that big lead. This is Sam Darnold's return. He's finally coming back from the mono, and I don't know if their offense is going to be connecting enough to try to keep up there with the Cowboys. So I like the Cowboys minus seven versus the Jets. Yeah, listen, I agree on that pick also. Uh, listen, obviously Sam Darnold had his health issues coming back from mono. You don't know what type of Sam Darnold you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, you may get a Sam Darnold like you got in week one, and you know, supposedly they said that he still had it in the system week one, so that's why he, he, he didn't play as good as what was hyped up to be. Uh, I just think there's too many question marks. Obviously, Dallas is going to try to take take away Le'Veon Bell. Yes. That's what you're going to do. Gotcha. Listen, you'll yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll let Sam Darnold try to beat you with all his wide receivers, yeah. which obviously they don't have a full core right now. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely like the Cowboys, uh, uh, um, you know, minus seven. I, I think they'll definitely cover um, probably – I think they'll cover maybe, you know, 14 points or over. Yeah. So, again, I think, I think there's too, too, too many question marks. Uh, I think Dak's probably going to go off, you know, because obviously last couple of weeks he hasn't looked good. You know, you know, people are doubting him. Um, they're making he, fun of his $40 million request. <laughs> yeah, they're making fun of, of, of him and, you know, his request. Uh, you know, I think they're going to go hard with Zeke, and I think Zeke has a big day today too. So. And, and with that said, now you're, you're on the show for the first time. What we usually do, we pick a top pick, which I said was the time, and we pick a second pick, which I gave with the Cowboys, and we give one pick who's an underdog who I think is going to win the game outright. This week, my underdog that I think is going to win, win outright is New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints have been playing very well with Teddy Bridgewater, the undefeated since he's been in there, and they're now going to be going into Jacksonville, which everybody's still making a big deal about Garner Minshew, but, I mean, they're saying Minshew magic, but you're still under 500. Like, I don't understand. Like, I understand it's a good gimmick. You like the mustache. You like the cockiness. You like how he is, but they're still not winning games. They're still two and three. So, as much as people would like to make a big deal out of Gardner Minshew, I think he's just playing average right now. I, I still don't see him raising the level of the offense. So, uh, Nick, they still need somebody like Nick Foles to come back. Like, I don't see any way that Nick Foles lost his job by how Gardner Minshew has been playing. So, I, I, I think they're a little bit overrated right now. Their defense is still not click, clicking. Jalen Ramsey is still, still with his back injury and in and out of the lineup. So I think that this is a perfect chance in New Orleans with Kamara to get going. Even though he's a questionable, but he will play to get Kamara going, to get Bridgewater steady into that lineup again. And Michael Thomas, I think, is going to have a big day for them. So I got the Saints plus two points, but I got the money line to beat, to beat, to beat, to beat, the, them, outright. To beat them outright. So I, I have the Saints beating the Jacksonville. What do you think? Um, listen, uh, um, a lot of good points there. So uh, listen – the whole thing with Gardner, Gardner Minshew, uh, obviously, it's because of you know what he brings to the table, not just as an athlete, but as a character. Yeah. yeah. So like the mustache and the sass, and, yeah. and people like that. It's yeah. obviously good, you know, for the NFL, good for the team. Yeah. Uh, I think. Listen, if Jalen Ramsey, you know, plays, I think that's going to be a big uh, difference. If he, uh, did they did they announce if he's playing or not? No. They so, well, I th- I think uh, so, so that's going to be huge. I, I, I think. Listen, if he doesn't, I don't think he's not playing. Okay. So if he doesn't play. Um, listen, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, I think I think the, the Saints have a good opportunity here. Um, uh, I think that you know they're obviously limited with Terry, te, uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater yeah. um, because of his style of play. But listen, he's still getting the ball to Michael Thomas. Um, but you're right; he's got to get Kamara uh, uh, going. Um, listen, everything when, when you see Kamara. All over the field, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, especially catching the ball, he's probably the best wide receiver in the league. You know, catching and running, running with the ball a, a, in terms of running backs. I mean, well, no, so, my boy, Mr. <laughs> McCaffrey is the best. At well, that. listen, statistically, he is right now. So, but do you think that, that that's still the same if if if, if uh, Drew Brees is playing right now? Um. Yeah, I actually do. I, I think McCaffrey's that good. I've been very high on McCaffrey since, and and we'll get into fantasy in a little bit. But McCaffrey, I've always been very high on. I I, I remember when he was in college, I said that that, that guy's gonna be the white Marshall Falk. Like, <laughs> honestly, like he, he has that much talent to be a Hall of Fame talent. Like and, I, and I really all, and, 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 and all with a backup quarterback too. Because look, people, yeah. people are not people are talking about it. But listen, uh, um, Cam is not even playing right now, and. Uh, 
you know, Christian, Mc, Christian McCaffrey's still doing his thing. So, And before we really got to get into fantasy a little bit, I want to say once again, we are hearing from Agave and Wallington at, at my boy's family place. Listen, yeah, if you place. want real good food, good brunch, we, you, brunch we've been specials, here before for two dudes in Mexico. This is awesome the first time place. we're here from Pete's Corner. Listen, it's authentic Mexican food. It's all fresh and it's all good. So, they got Taco come, Tuesday. So you guys got to come down here. Oh, come, come through, drinks, come drinks are phenomenal. You got to come down here at Agave and Wallington. So as we move on into fantasy, we, we talked a little bit about McCaffrey, and we talked like this week is one of those weeks where it was hard to pick up somebody else. Yeah, fantasy. there's really nobody there, out there. there. There's mm-hmm. nobody out there. There was no there was no set injuries. One person that I that stood out to me actually this morning. I, I didn't even pay attention to it until then. Is the Redskins last week? Um, Vernon Davis wasn't able to play. We already know Jordan Reed is on the IR. So now they're starting a new tight end and. Um, Mr. Sprinkle from, I think, Arkansas. He's going to get his chance to finally move up there. They, they went back to Case Keenum. Even though he's a really young tight end, and you got Case Keenum, who's a veteran, and they've been so bad, they're going against the Miami Dolphins, and I think that may be your chance to maybe sneak a tight end, because we all know tight end position has been horrible this year. It's it's been, you've got maybe like three to five guys, and that's been it. Like It's been really bad at tight end position. So, so to try to try to sneak this guy out there and try to pick him up, start him against a bad defense, I, that's my play of the week to try to get a sleeper off the free agent wire and, and sparkle from the tight end from Washington. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's a good point. Anything's, anything's possible with that Miami defense. I mean, who knows? You, know, you never know. You might see a shootout today. I mean, they may they, they may run the score on each other. So. Who wins that game? Like, that's that's going to be such a weirdest uh, game. Like, uh, I, 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 think I don't even know the line on it because it's just such a bad game. Where are they playing? Uh, I think it's in Miami. Miami? Yeah. That's tough, man. I, I'm still going to go with Washington. I, I think they have the better team, the better offense. Yes, yeah, in Miami. So Right yeah. now, Washington is a four-point favorite. Yeah, I, I, I'd have to stick with Washington on that one. But yeah, I, I go with that just because I, I – I think Washington loses because they're bad. I think Miami is losing because they're tanking. I think they want to lose. I, I I don't think Washington wants to lose. I think that's the thing. Because if they wanted to lose, they would just send a rookie quarterback out there who's not ready yet and just have them try to learn on the job. They're starting Case Keenum because they still want to try and they still want to win games. But so, but Miami, they're just out there. To, they pretty much said, Josh Rosen, you have an 11-game tryout with us. That's it. That's crazy. That, that's pretty much it. That, that with a bad team. So, uh, I don't Josh I, Rosen. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be the second year in a row that he's just going to be replaced by a top pick. Oh, and and, and speak, speaking on that real quick before we get out of here, Tua had another good game yesterday. Yeah. Um, he's somebody that, listen, we're – Everybody's going to be talking about him as the number one pick. I personally am still not sold at him as being a franchise quarterback. I think he, I think he's in an offense where you have a top ten running back in college. You have two top ten wide receivers out there. And I still don't know if they're going to be able to like say, all right, this is the guy, this is my franchise, and that's it. So I'm still not sold on him yet. So what, what's your thoughts on Tua? Listen, you, I, I, I have to differ an opinion on this, and I'm, I'm sold. I mean, mm-hmm. Listen, he's doing his thing. Um, obviously, he's got a lot of a lot of weapons around him. So, mm-hmm. but listen, Alabama's looking good right now. I mean, uh, you know, top three. Yeah. I mean, top obviously in the nation. Uh, but yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, they're looking really, really good. Obviously, you know, uh, that still has to be said. You know, on who they're going to play. Yeah. Because. I mean, they, they haven't. I mean, they've, they haven't been really tested yeah. or battle tested. They, they haven't. They, or they haven't really from from, from yeah, somebody top person. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, they're not. They're not playing against a Clemson yet, or I mean, Oklahoma has a bad defense. Yeah, but I mean, listen, they're, they're, Ohio they're, State, they're, Wisconsin. They're, I mean, isn't he predicted to be the first pick? Yeah. You know, in this yeah, draft? He's so by far. Uh, that that says a lot. So. They they have. The, this is the reason why the Dolphins are tanking. The, 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 there's a hashtag for it says tanking for Tua. Like this is. What everything's trying to be about. That said, two best people, the best quarterbacks in, in in college football are Tua and then Lawrence from Clemson. I'm sold on Lawrence from Clemson. I'm not completely sold, sold on Tua. Tua. So I think that he's he, he has a lot of times where I see him. He sits in the pocket. He has a clear pocket because he has a great offensive line, and he, he does. And and he'll get the ball to the wide receiver, but. If you're a wide receiver in college, you have three yards of room if you're a good wide receiver. That same wide receiver in the pro, you're going to have one yard of room. So my question is, can he still fit it in the one yard that he's fitting it in three yards right now? And, you don't think he and, can. I don't, and I'm not completely sure that he can. I see some of his throws that go for touchdowns that are touchdowns because he's in college. Gotcha. Not, not because 
is a perfect throw. He does have some good perfect throws, so I'm not saying he's not talented or anything like that. He obviously is. But I, he doesn't make the NFL throws that I think that a top pick or a guaranteed franchise quarterback should make yet. Good point. So with that, that's the end of our first Pete's Corner from Agave and Wallington. Like I said, you have to come down here. Fresh food, authentic Mexican come food. Come man. Come through. And, and, and support my boy, boy's family. So, listen, we will catch you next week on Wednesday back at Bogey's. Uh, hopefully, Dre will be alive by then. But if Dre's not. Out. Dre, if, where you at? Where you at, if, Dre? If, if not, we'll, we'll have a funeral for you or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, we will catch you on Wednesday. Peace out. Later, mi gente.